welcome to the Docuzine. My name is Ali Walla. I'm a pulmonary and critical care physician at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi and the lung cancer lead. I have with me my colleague, Dr. Zaid Zumat, who is the division chair of pulmonary medicine at Cleveland Clinic. And today we're going to be talking about one of the scarier cancers, lung cancer, and specifically uh, screening for this cancer. Good afternoon, Zaid. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So, thank you. So I want to start off by asking you if you could tell me a little bit about lung cancer and what it is for the general audience. So cancer of the lung is predominantly driven by exposure to noxious particles in the environment, in particular uh, smoking, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. is the main risk factor for developing lung cancer. Right. And uh, we divide it into four stages, with stage one being the earliest stage and stage four being when it's more advanced and had spread uh, beyond the, the, the chest uh, area. Um, unfortunately, uh, lung cancer traditionally has uh, been one that we only find out about in its advanced stages. And approximately 70% of lung cancers historically would have only been diagnosed when they're already reached stage four. Um, lung cancer in stage one is completely curable mm -hmm. um, and curable without even the need for treatments like chemotherapy after the, the cancer is removed. Whereas stage four lung cancer cannot be cured. And that's why it's very important to catch it and, and diagnose it when it's still at the early stages in stage one. Yeah, and I think this is important because lung cancer is kind of one of those cancers that is called a, like a silent cancer. The early stage cancers don't have any symptoms. And this is why screening is important. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about what screening options are out there for lung cancer? Uh, and what we have here at Cleveland Clinic? So the most sensitive test and the easiest test to do to screen for lung cancer is a CT scan of the chest. So this is a x-ray based uh, screening modality. An X is, uh, an X so CT of the chest is x-ray based and it gives us very detailed images of the whole uh, of the lungs. Um, in uh, a quick test uh, that does not require any contrast or any injections, you just need uh, to take one big breath, hold your breath for a few seconds, and the scanner will take up to 500 slices of the lungs. So when you mention CT scan, a lot of people are very worried about uh, radiation because in, I think, a lot of our minds, CT scan means a lot of radiation. So how is this CT scan different from a regular CT scan of the chest? So fortunately, because the lungs are full of air, actually the, lung, the you know, CT scans of the lung do not expose the body to too much radiation that gets absorbed into the tissue. Um, but in specific for screening uh, for lung cancer, uh, we have a specific different uh, protocol for uh, lung cancer screening, and it's called the low-dose CT scan. Mm -hmm. So this low-dose scan is designed in a way such that a minimum amount of radiation is, is given to the body. And this is important because when we talk about screening uh, for lung cancer, we are talking about annual scan, so doing the scan once a year, uh, every year, for, for you know foreseeable future. So we do want to reduce the amount of radiation that a patient is exposed to. Now, the amount of radiation that is uh, given uh, when a patient has a low dose CT scan is equivalent only to about um, seven normal chest x-rays. So a normal chest x-ray is, is a very safe thing uh, that we do all the time. So a low dose CT is only equivalent to about seven of those. And it's actually also, if you think about it, uh, not that much more than just being alive on, on planet Earth, being exposed to the background radiation that we all get exposed to, or taking a, a few flights, uh, long haul flights, where our bodies are exposed to more radiation. So it's, it's only a little bit more than that. And as with everything in life, uh, especially when it comes to medicine, uh, everything has a cost and a, and a benefit. And, and in this case, uh, you know, we really generally believe, all of us in the medical community, uh, that the benefit far outweighs the cost uh, for this particular type of test in this situation. And, and what is the benefit to the patient of getting these scans on an annual basis? Very large studies performed on tens of thousands of people now have mm -hmm. all reached the same uh, outcome, the same conclusion, that if we do choose the right patients to have these screening tests, in particular there are patients we would consider uh, being at high risk of developing cancer. So we're not right. doing this for everybody, mm -hmm. it's just for patients who are at high risk. 
um, and we screen those patients regularly with low dose CT scan, that we will catch uh, cancers at an early stage uh, before they become too advanced and hence become uncurable. So this is termed a stage shift. Uh, so when I mentioned before that 70% of lung cancers are historically diagnosed at stage four, if we do the lung cancer screening on patients with uh, you know, high risk for to develop lung cancer, we will shift that so that uh, more f instead of 10%, 40% of patients are caught at stage one, uh, a little more at stage two, and the patients who are caught at stage four, uh, the number shrinks to uh, much less than, than 70%, something between 20 and 30%. And that is why it is important to do the screening. We want this stage shift because when we catch the bigger proportion of people at stage one, we can cure them before uh, they advance and become uh, un uncurable. Well, I'm glad you mentioned stage shift because a lot of these studies, uh, the largest ones out of the U.S. and Europe, have shown that doing lung cancer screening will result in a reduction in lung cancer mortality, and that's primarily driven by this stage shift. But you also mentioned that there are certain people who are eligible for this, and this is not for the general population. So for our audience, can you tell us who is eligible and who is not for these low-dose CT scans? The group of patients we would consider being at uh, risk of developing lung cancer mm -hmm. are smokers uh, who, are, who have smoked more than 20 cigarettes or one packet a day, for 30 years of more. If they quit more than 15 years ago, they would no longer be considered uh, high risk. Uh, but uh, now the patients need to be between the age of 55 and 75. So if somebody has spoke, smoked, say, two packets a day, but for 15 years, does that count as 30 pack years? Does that make that person eligible then? Yes, absolutely. So it's a direct, uh, uh, the risk is directly um, judged by the amount of uh, exposure to cigarettes. So 40 cigarettes a day is equivalent uh, to 20 cigarettes a day, for, but for two years. So you okay. get one extra pack year history, or you double your pack year history if you smoke double the amount of cigarettes. Um, so yes, absolutely, if you smoke uh, 40 cigarettes a day for 20 years, that would be considered 40 pack years. If you smoked uh, 60 cigarettes a day for 10 uh, years, then that's equivalent to 30 pack years. Okay, very good. What about in our region where we are in the Middle East where people smoke um, shisha as well as midwach? Um, I know the DOH has certain guidelines for those people as well. Do you mind talking about those as well? Yes, absolutely. So the Department of Health here in uh, the UAE has uh, made uh, adjustments to these guidelines uh, to take into account our local smoking habits. And uh, it's difficult to directly quantify and estimate how much, for example, uh, one hour of smoking shisha is uh, in relation to pack years. But mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, the, the, the final decision was to consider 20 years of smoking uh, shisha or 20 years of smoking uh, midwach or doha uh, to be uh, putting us in a high risk uh, category so that we would become eligible for, low, uh, for the lung cancer screening. Program. Excellent. So to summarize, anybody who smoked more than 20 years of shisha or midwach or more than 30 pack years of cigarettes is eligible for lung cancer screening as long as they're above the age of 55 and either they're active smokers or they've quit within the last 15 years, correct? Absolutely. That's perfect. So if said. somebody fits that criteria, what's the next step? How can they come to Cleveland Clinic to schedule their lung cancer screening visit? So to make an appointment uh, mm -hmm. with the pulmonology clinic, uh, this can be done easily on the app. We can call the call center at Cleveland Clinic to make the appointment. And uh, as a first step, they can be seen by any uh, pulmonary doctor to get this uh, sorted out. Um, it's something that usually can be done on the day. Uh, doesn't need an appointment and before to get the scan done, so it's easy to slot in. Um, and. Uh, it's a great opportunity as well to get your lungs checked because anyone who fulfills the criteria for a screening has smoked a lot and they might have some impact on their lungs. And if they get assessed at the pulmonology clinic, they, you know, we might feel that it's a good idea to take the opportunity to do some simple breathing tests mm -hmm. and examine the lungs and then also get the scan. Perfect. So coming to the lung cancer clinic would not only help them in getting screening, but they would also get a lung checkup in terms of lung function tests and see if they need any inhalers as well. 
So my next question would be, I guess, if somebody has an abnormal CT scan, what do they do next? What is the next process in terms of workup if we have a suspicious lesion uh, on a CT scan? So there are very clear and you know, simple guidelines that we follow, and it's the same guidelines that are followed all over the world mm -hmm. uh, to tell us what the next step should be. Um, and this could be a variety of, of options. One might be to do nothing but just to watch and to repeat the scan in three months or six months, depending on the size and the shape of, of anything that is found. Um, if uh, we feel worried enough that we want to uh, confirm a diagnosis either way, then we need to think about getting a biopsy or getting a sample of the lesion. Um, and for that, we also have different approaches and different options, and these include doing a simple uh, bronchoscopic uh, biopsy, uh, where, a short, uh, where a small camera is inserted uh, through the mouth or the nose into the lungs, and we can go and find this lesion using uh, more advanced uh, GPS guidance systems and robotic systems. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one option. Another option is to put a little needle between the ribs, and this is something that our interventional radiology colleagues can do uh, if we think that is the best and easiest approach uh, to get to the, to, the, to the lesion that we found on the scanning CT. And finally, sometimes it's, uh, it's necessary to do a small uh, surgery between the ribs that the thoracic surgeons can perform, uh, called the video assisted thoracic surgery. And this, these days, we can do uh, with the help of robots and, and doing a many, a very small scar, mini scar. So all these options are available to us, uh, and it all depends on on the finding and the size and, and how concerned we are. And just to add one additional point why it would be very helpful to come to the pulmonary clinic if you are a smoker is because we do offer a, a full gamut of, of support for smokers to help them quit. And this includes counseling as well as medication for patients who are ready to quit to allow them to get rid of this dangerous habit. Very good. Now I'd like to mention that at Clearing Clinic, we're fortunate that we have a multidisciplinary team uh, that meets every week to discuss all um, scans that are, are worrisome and to decide what is the best way in uh, diagnosing and treating these patients. Well, thank you so much, Zaid, for being here today. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for listening in to our podcast today. And just to summarize what we said, if you uh, or a loved one um, have smoked for 30 pack years, which means one packet of cigarette a day for 30 years, uh, or if you smoke shisha or midwalk for more than 20 years and you're above the age of 55, uh, then you would be eligible for potentially getting a uh, low-dose CT scan for lung cancer screening. And to do that, as we mentioned, uh, you just need to call the hospital and get an appointment in the pulmonary clinic, and then we take it from there. Thank you.